So here is an example on the board of a, we have an annual membership client here that i uh, been speaking with since before July of 2019 this year. And what can often happen, what I've, what I've noticed from clients that don't make a lot of income, you're starting off with low cash flow, right? We're not doing so well financially when you first come across my channel and myself, and then you, you know, you sign up for a program. What I've been noticing is uh, sometimes we fall off, and this can happen to all of us, to the best of us, where we we fall off. We don't stay on track. We don't follow up with your coach, so to speak. You know, me being the person that's helping you. Uh, what will happen is you don't book a phone call. I don't hear from you. You know, I'm, I'm not going to literally, you know, be holding your hand. I want to as much as I want to, but you have to show that commitment that you want to work with me, even though you purchased, you know, the program. So every now and then I get a client or two that just falls off. I don't hear nothing from them. I'll, I'll send you emails. I'll send you a spreadsheet. Hey, what's going on? Hey, book a call. Here it is, you know, and I won't hear nothing. So here's an example of a client like that where I'm putting them on the spot, where I'm going to put their number and say, hey, listen, um, this is where we started off. Income is 3647 Expenses are 3392 Total debt is just under 200000 Cash flow, 25461 They do have a personal line of credit for 7000 at 10.99%. And this is with the same bank that I have a line of credit with, Bright Star Credit Union. Uh, and here's the breakdown of their uh, specific debts, you know, the mortgage, got a student loan, two credit cards, right? And then they also have a, a vehicle, but it's a lease, so I don't count that as a debt that I try to tackle that because I won't get a interest savings from it, whereas I'm paying interest in other locations that I could recoup cash flow and recoup some interest savings, all right? 49-year-old female, financial goal is to be debt-free, own some real estate, and she wants to learn about the infinite banking concept. And when I originally worked with her in my notes, what I have from the last time we spoke was uh, she had a thousand bucks cash on hand, so that's going into the line of credit, bring that balance down to somewhere or right around 25, 2600 bucks. And then, you know, same thing, income goes in, expenses come out. And it's going to be really neck and neck here where she's got money going in, but as soon as it goes in, money has to come out to pay bills. And we really don't have a whole lot of cash flow to be knocking this balance down. So even though she's not really paying much interest on this line of credit because her income is more than the balance owed on the line of credit, I'm still not going to advise uh, any chunking just yet. So I recall speaking with her. I was like, hey, you know, let's primary goal. Let's bring the line of credit to zero. Right. Let's let's try and get that. Bring line of credit to zero as soon as possible. These two credit cards are at zero percent till I believe next year in 2020. Um, so we're not bothering with that. I believe this one expires before this one, last time I checked, and this is a student loan at, I think it was 5.6%. Um, and so what do you do when your cash flow is like really low um, and you got all this debt, it's so out of proportion in terms of what this person makes versus the amount of debt that they have. This, you know, they're their mortgage is re really beating them up, but you know we can't even tackle that right now uh, because it, we wouldn't really make too much of a difference. We're not going to get a cash flow gain. So I want to expand on some alternative ways that we can pay off debt while doing the concept. So it's pretty clear to me that as soon as this line of credit goes to zero, hopefully we can get it down by the end of this year, like I said, I've been working with her since 
you know, uh, since before July. So that was the balance in July 2019. We're now in November, stepping into December. So by the end of this year, 2019, I want to be able to make a chunk. And I'm hoping that I can either, depending on these 0% credit cards, if they, if they expire soon, then I'm going to want to wipe those out, of course. Um, but if not, if I have till 2020, August or September, because on her spreadsheet, this one said August, and then this one said September, I believe, but it didn't say 2019 or 2020. So we're not sure, but if it was 2019, then obviously we would try to shift some of that debt over to the line of credit. If it's not expiring in 2019, we're gonna leave it alone and chunk at the student loans. And with only 7K, I'm gonna to wanna to do about maybe a third of the balance owed on the uh, student loan. So, 14,309, that was the balance in July 2019. So obviously by December that balance will be lower, but I'm still gonna, just gonna go off that balance, say a third, what does that equal? 4,700. So I think a chunk at the student loans of 4,700 would be ideal. And even though I don't get a cash flow gain, it would still make sense based on the amount of interest that I'm able to recoup, right? So just by, and look at that, 5.6 from 10.99, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. But you gotta remember that stuff is amortized. So that 5.6% is a lot more than that 10.99. And because her income is similar or close to the chunk, that we're gonna be paying a lot less because that income's going to be you know, sitting in the line of credit for quite some time. And even though it's coming out, I'm avoiding having a payment with Bright Star Credit Union specifically, because I know this, that when you make your paychecks <clears throat> into the line of credit, that's a payment. But what happens is with Bright Star is you can push out, you can push out the due date up to four months. I've seen this before. And this helps because now I don't have a payment on the line of credit, so it doesn't eat away at my cash flow, obviously. And 100% of my cash flow goes towards principal because there is no payment, right? And then the only thing I get charged is that daily interest rate. So 10.99% on whatever the, you know, the balance is on any given day you just take the balance, right? We times it by the 10.99, divide it by 365, boom, we get that daily rate. What ends up happening is about maybe a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, you know, a day in interest. So maybe she's looking at 30 to 40 dollars uh, a month in interest and 4,700 towards the principal of that student loan debt could possibly save me over a thousand bucks in interest. So a thousand bucks in interest saved. I now owe that same money over here on the line of credit, 4,700, whether I make that chunk in December. And if it takes me six months or less to zero it out, and I paid in that time frame, 150, maybe $200 in interest at max, well then I would have a $800 net savings, and then I would do it again the following time. That second chunk, do another 4,700. Now what's happening is more of that 16653 is going towards principal, less towards interest. I'm getting closer and closer to that cash flow number. But in reality, this is slow, right? Even, you know, being the concept of velocity banking, it's, it's still slow. We're faster than debt snowball, of course. We do relieve some stress, 
but we're still going slow. And so what I would do for this lady is really, you know, say, hey, we really need to 10x our income at least one time in about a year or less, about one year or less to 10x. And there are some simple things that we can incorporate in our lifestyle, such as doing some affiliate marketing or referral marketing that don't cost any money to start. Literally, you can find people like me that put themselves out there, that have an audience, that have a channel, and they have a product or a service that's somewhere around coaching, consulting, maybe they have a product, a high-end product or a high-end coaching service that these people have affiliate and referral programs already built in, already set up. And all you have to do is reach out to their team, say, hey, uh, I really like what that person is selling. I really like what that person is doing. Can I you know, be a part of that? Can I join? And most of the time they say, yeah, why not? Let's join. And they'll, I've seen commissions anywhere from like 10 to 20% on whatever it is that they sell, right? And this doesn't, this doesn't require you to start a business, start an LLC, you'll get 1099, right? You'll get paid personally, right? This way there's, there's no cost out of your pocket. It's simply a time consuming thing. It just takes your time. So you'll have your main job that you work 40, 50 hours a week. And when you come home, you gotta be focusing, okay, how can I share this person's product, this person's service? How can I be of help to them? How can they help me, right? So affiliate marketing, referral marketing is a great, great tool to start with. Um, the other thing, it would be getting a side hustle. A side hustle is great. Having something that I can, you know, do as soon as I, you know, come home from work, uh, or maybe on my days off, maybe if I have one day off a week, two days off a week, what could I be doing to bring in extra money? And then the last thing is cut back on expenses. Is it possible for you to live on 70% of your income for the next six to nine months? Can you give me six to nine months to live on 70% of what you make so I can have an additional 10 to 20, almost 30% in cash flow to work with so that we can pay off debt a lot faster. So doing the 70-30 rule, is that a possibility, man? Can I do that? Just give me six months. Can we, can, we, uh, can we cut out cable? Can we cut out subscriptions, right? Can we cut out the subscriptions? Can we, can we cut out eating outside, you know? Can we cut out some entertainment? Even if it's even if it's one time a week that you eat out less one time a week, that could give me an extra hundred to two hundred dollars in that one month. If I cut out cable, that could give me an extra Hundred fifty to two hundred dollars. I mean, those those bills are so dumb to have. It's it's ridiculous to have cable now. It really is. You have Netflix, you have Hulu, you have Disney Plus and Apple TV and all these different services that you could, you know, get to know. Uh, what pay nine dollars or twenty dollars a month for? So if you if you absolutely can't do without cable, all I'm saying is. Pay for cable, but less than what you're paying right now. Why not? And then the subscriptions. Do you have too many subscriptions? Do you have a Netflix, a Hulu, a Apple Plus, a Disney, a this, a that, and the other thing? The Pandora, the Spot, like, can you cut it all down to like one or two subscriptions? And that could save me maybe 50 bucks, right? An additional 50 from the subscriptions. I mean, there's so much. There's so many different ways to recoup cash flow here and and these are some Dave Ramsey principles obviously you know cutting out uh, spending less than what you make living on 70% of your income 
you know, but the 10x strategy that comes from Grant Cardone, um, developing a side hustle or teaming up with someone in the internet world that does affiliate marketing, referral marketing that doesn't cost you no entry to join, no uh, entry fee to join their system, okay? So just some ideas there. This is me, you know, talking to that one client that I have, calling them out, saying, hey, you know, book a call with me, I'm here. You know, you, you, you paid for something, hey, it's up to you to really commit to it in order to get the results that you want. Um, and being that this person lives in my state, I mean, shoot, I got an office now, come see me, you know? Just set up a time, come see me in person and maybe sometimes people just need a, you know, a, a, a kick in the you know what, right? To uh, get committed, man.